Hey class, Mr. G here going over what is going to be covered in ceramics A uh, for this term. At the beginning of each term, we pass out a bunch of papers. We have our syllabus, we have media release forms, we have our project list, we have some... There's like five other reports and forms and stuff like that. I don't remember some of them, but this is what you do need to know. For the class, what are you guys going to be studying? What are you guys going to be covering? So that you have an understanding of what I'm going to expect from you. Now for me today, uh, this is kind of an overview of the stuff that I do in my class. And I want you guys to be aware of the kind of the projects that I that I create and how I, how I structure that for my students. Um, number one, a project list. I have a project list. Okay, so on the list of projects, it comes in two pages. And this is only because the copier can't do front and back anymore. I don't know why, and it bothers me immensely. Um, so on one page, we have the project list, all the stuff that the students are required to do in my class. Now, at the top here, we have a simple breakdown for each. They're going to do a build piece of glaze. For each project, you're getting three different sections of the grade. When it One is the build grade, the glaze grade, and the project grade, the overall how everything came together. Uh, after that, we have an art history assignment. Once a week, we do art history, and for that art history assignment, it's something on the board. There's three sections that I'm covering it on. I'm doing this as a generalized overview in case you want to adapt it, change it, however you want to run it. Uh, but I cover three components in my write-up and what the student has to turn into me, which is the description, the description, interpretation, and judgment. Those three things that they've got to fill out on their form, on their paper that they're turning into me about what do they see, why do they see, and why do they think the artist made those decisions. Um, so it's a very open-ended level of the art history assignment. We do open into discussion. We, uh, we talk about the error that when these pieces were made, why these pieces were made in some sense, instances, because we know um, background as to why certain pieces were made. Some pieces, um, our passion projects of the artists and we have to and we acknowledge that as such but if it was like a renaissance piece where it's being commissioned by the church and you have to think why did the artists make these decisions in the creation of this piece um were they happy with the church at the time or were they not happy because there's some works that kind of lead into those discussions it's an important discussion to be had because then it's not just it's a piece of artwork for artwork's sake but it's because it's a political thing and there's reasons and and there's components involved that most students don't know about, nor uh, does the general public perceive and understand about those uh, about what was going on at the time, why this war was happening, why the, the artists painted more uh, in favor of one side versus the other. Sometimes it's not in the favor of who was paying them, but it was in the favor of the belief system that the artists had, and that's a that's an acknowledgement that is great for the classroom discussion. Um, so, art history in a nutshell. Um, now, for me in ceramics class, I cover three units overall in this in this term. Uh, for the first term, it's really the basics of clay, how clay works. So the three things I've got to cover is pinch, coil, and slab. So in each project, under those units, you have a certain number of pieces that you have to make. So for the pinch section, uh, for this one we have pinch pot with exterior decoration, pinch pot with uh, or pinch cup with handle and exterior decoration, and then a speaker. Um, now the speaker I put between the pinch and the, sl and the slab section because some students want to do a their cell phone speaker. Their cell phone speaker that they're making, you can either do this out of a pinch or you can do this out of a slab. It works for both ends, however you guys want to make it. Uh, but this also gives them enough of, okay, they understand how clay works, how clay can be manipulated, and then what Add, what additions can you add to the clay to make that really nice uh, structured piece? Now, once they've gone through the pinch section, before the pinch and the slab, again, this is kind of like the going, going between the two, we have our glaze plate. Now, on the glaze plate, the student is creating a flat piece of clay, which is going to be the slab section, adding a, a coil piece around it. Um, and it, it's, again, it's over those, like, I do a little bit of... Uh, Here's how to add this coil here. Here's how to do a slab here. Here's how to do pinch. We're, we're manipulating the, the different levels, but they're all getting the same basics at the same time. And we do the glaze plate because we need to understand what glazes work and how they work. So uh, as any ceramic studio has, you have a couple different variants. You have under glazes, you have gloss glazes. Sometimes you have um, uh, some homemade glazes, depending on uh, which, what, how your studio is set up. And as soon as you need to understand that if you add um, different levels of the glaze, if you paint it in three different sections, so 
Now, some ceramic studios, you guys have test tiles that you make out of clay, you take a little bitty, bit of clay, and then you put the glaze on one side of it. Um, for the, my students, we do the, gla the glaze plate, so they can do it a section of number of glazes uh, that they have to put down their sketch pad what the glaze is. They have to do the name of the glaze, the firing temperature of the glaze, whether it's food safe or not food safe, and then do it in different sections to where it's like, if I do one pass, it's this color. If I do two passes, it's this color. If I do three passes, it's this color. Three is usually the magic number for full coverage, uh, but it does depend on the glaze because some glaze is really thin when it comes out of, the, out of the container because some kid added too much water in it, it's got extra water in it, so it's a lot thinner glaze. And it's important for them to know what that's gonna happen before they glaze any of their pieces, that way they can see a before and after result. All right, so for coil pieces, once they get to the coil section, um, we have a coil vase at 10 inches, a coil cup with handle and exterior decoration, a coil bowl, eight inch wide, eight inch high, and another coil bowl, um, 10 inches wide with various coil, coil applications. Now for coil piece, the vase has gotta be 10 inches. Now, this one's shorter because I had this nice, like fringed out, like beveled top end, but because she didn't seal that those two sections right, um, it did come apart in the firing, uh, but she ended up with this, this vase, which was really good. Um, Lots of coil application changes so that you're not just adding single coils, you're mixing it up, you're getting different variants along the sides of it. Another one that a kid started that I fired off for us was, uh, for an example, was an exterior decoration where she did some uh, coil S's and then coil bits around the side. But we want to make sure that is sealed up as properly as possible. Um, two coil cup with exterior decoration. Where we have the cup, the smooth, the sides been smoothed out. Lots of cool decoration via glaze. Now glaze is an option, but I'd also like to see some sort of etching, which would be the Mishima or Scrafito techniques, uh, where you're putting down glaze and then carving through the glaze to create your designs, or carving out your designs and then scraping off the top part, which is your Scrafito. Uh, Mishima is where you'll put down the glaze itself or then carve through the glaze. Two different, two different techniques that just come out really cool. Um, also, for the heavier high-end ones, we have our uh, cool tiki head. I like the tiki. Um, lots of cool designs on this one. Uh, really well done by the student. And again, all of these are sketched out in the sketchbook as you're coming up with those designs so that you can create some sort of cohesion between the beginning of the project and the end of the project. So start off with a couple sketches, a couple of thumbnail sketches, some ideas, finishing up, uh, then going to the build phase and then finishing up with glaze so that you have a final project and you're putting down all of your references in between. So like what color glaze do you want? Where'd you get the idea from? All that kind of stuff is in your sketchbook easy to follow along with um, with everything that you're building. Uh, the Again, the slab technique is the last one to cover here. Now, the pieces that I usually do in this one are the slab vase at 10 inches high, the slab house with exterior decoration, heavy on the details, um, slab vessel six inches high with a lid, uh, and then the slab vase slab vessel with exterior alterations. Now, the slab stuff, I don't necessarily have a ton of examples for. Um, because the slab houses, usually most students le take them with uh, pretty, fairly quickly because they like them a lot. Um, one that I've done in the past was this gnome village, and I'm going to pull it over. So one of my students made this nice, cool gnome village, lots of variant pieces to it, lots of structure, uh, glass fusion on the bottom here. Uh, the reason that he got to do a larger piece and each one of them is uh, s smaller than the intended result is because he did multiple pieces and uh, made a whole village with like toadstools and these little vine pieces coming out of it. And I was like, that works for me. You're good. Uh, and so that's the kind of stuff I want to see. Lots of creative d details and, and decoration. Again, all that stuff is sketched out in the sketchbook first, but while you're building it, so then if you have questions, I can reference something back to make sure that your life is easy as well as mine. Um, slab vase, don't have one of those. Cups with um, some exterior decoration. So I had one student who, for his piece, he wanted to make uh, a cup 
series. And again, this is to, um, so some of my students will come to me and they'll say like, well, instead of making that, can I make this instead? If your piece that you're gonna make is at least showing the same amount of work and you're putting that the same amount of dedication into it and you wanna do a different project, by all means, I'll substitute some stuff out because you have a idea of what you wanna do. So we did this three cup series um, with uh, these stenciled in designs and I thought that this was a relatively good good um, compromise to the piece. So it's not just one piece, it's a series of pieces and how these things fit together. And then it, it left to a good discussion as to how to create a series that has cohesion and, what, and how to build those pieces together in a cohesive manner. And finally, some glazing decorations. One of the aspects that we like to do when we're dealing with slabs is showcasing how much detail that you can add into a piece that really showcases glazing talents and techniques. So this piece, um, is all done with slip trailing, which is done with, uh, sometimes you can use those little baby um, nose sucker things. Those work great because you just load the slip into it and then you can draw the designs on. I found some, hang on. I don't remember the store that I got these from, but uh, these little bottles that um, you can put glaze into, comes with a tip, put a little needle in the top of the tip to make sure that these things stay, um, empty and uh, lucid so that you can work on them to submerge those ones again. Uh, but it's a nice little bottle that you can put, you can take the top off, put the glaze into, screw the top on, and you have two different application methods. One is a super fine tip that you can put the needle into to clear it out. The other one is a slightly larger, the other one is a slightly larger one that you can press at a longer, larger, thicker bead. But both these work really well. Students love them, love using them and creating those designs. Uh, so I encourage all my students to uh, come up with some cool designs to throw down on a tile. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You always get good results. Other than that, that takes care of my ceramics class. Uh, one thing that I thought in addition, as I said, this is page one, page two is this one, which is a spreadsheet form that they can use to make what we were working on, what assignment, um, or not the, you have the project list at the top of which project you're doing, along with the different weeks at the bottom for the art history, because the art history is 300 points. Uh, each of those sections that I stated is 100 points in value. So if they miss um, one section, if you average out uh, 200 points out of 300, you're getting a 66 percentage, which means you failed that section. So it's important that the students are aware that they need to do all the parts so that they can make sure that their grade stays up. But again, in the top, I got the different breakdowns for this, which is the pre-design, the sketchbook, the build, the creative additions, the assignment to due date, and then the art history, which is just to be done for the bottom section down here for them to write out what to do when and then they can keep this into their sketchbook into their uh in their notes so they have an ongoing record of to what they're doing how they're going to do it and what they got to cover and they can check off when things are due as well as did they complete those assignments i can also go back and just add a note in there as like this is due at this time um if necessary so that that way you got an ongoing record of what is due when it's due and how it's supposed to be done if you have guys have any questions, raise your hand down in the comments below as always, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Other than that, I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys.